Grace and peace. I'm Brian Musser, the Baptist Campus Minister here at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power Christian Fellowship, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world. And we are going through our series on what we believe, which is an exploration of the impact the essential beliefs of Christianity have on our lives. So it's not just what we believe, but it's what we believe in how what we believe matters. What way do our beliefs change how we engage things? And this is week eight in an eight week series. So this is the last session for us. And we are looking at the end or the future or how things work out, what the future holds. And the idea is that God wins. God wins an eternal victory. We believe at some point in the imminent future, God will dramatically intervene in the course of history through the return of Jesus Christ, causing the culmination of this creation. At this moment, humanity will enter into eternity. Those who are connected with God will be eternally present with God in heaven. Those who are disconnected with God from, from God will be eternally separated from God in hell. Although heaven and hell are primarily spiritual and relational, this does not diminish their reality. So that's what we believe about the future. That's what we believe about how this entire narrative that is going on in God's creation, from creation to the fall to redemption to restoration, that's how it ends in this eternal victory that God wins. Now let's talk a little bit. This might be a, an interesting thing, game theory. Now I am posting this on YouTube, on the internet, using a whole lot of different things. So, so I'm going to assume that some of you, at least some of you, have some inclinations towards um, online gaming or towards any sorts of gaming as well. Now, when you're in a game, and any game really doesn't matter, the rules are arbitrary, and when that game ends, nothing that happens in that game matters, unless we who are outside of the game choose to make it matter. The meaning, the value in a game are not intrinsic to the game, they're added from the outside of the game. Idea. I minister at Drexel in Philadelphia. We have several sports teams. Let's just, since it is the fall, let's talk about football. Whether a Philadelphia Eagles team wins or loses a football game has actually absolutely no bearing on reality whatsoever. Whether they win well or win poor, uh, poorly or lose terribly, However that works, it really doesn't matter in the overall workings of the universe. That game is completely arbitrary. But for those of us who are fans, it matters a great deal if we are fans. I'm here, not here admitting to be an Eagle, Philadelphia Eagles fan. Okay, I just want to put that out there. For those of us who are fans, it matters greatly. For the players... Win or lose doesn't really matter unless their job depends upon it, unless some sense of self-worth depends upon their performance, unless how their family or their friends or their teammates view them depends upon their performance. The meaning within a game comes has to come from outside of the game. And we look at that with the creation as well. Within the creation, Things can have meaning as creation goes, but actually ultimate meaning has to be added from something that exists outside of that. Now, there are two ways that theism answers this question is, one, God existing outside of the creation shows us what is valuable and adds value and worth into the creation. And secondly, as we engage the creation or as we think about our lives, past the creation, the afterlife, the eternity, and we see ourselves as eternal beings, that can change and that adds value and meaning to how we live here and now. So how this story ends 
and what happens next adds meaning to what happens here and now. So just looking at this, and this is going to be a review, a quick review of some verses from the Old Testament that hint at ideas of the afterlife. Job 19, 25 through 27. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that as the last, he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God, at whom I see for myself, whom my eyes will behold, and not another. My heart grows faint within me. So we see in Job, Job expects to be destroyed, but also to see God after he has been destroyed. Then moving on to Psalm 49, they will travel to Sheol like sheep with death as their shepherd. The godly will rule over them when the day of vindication dawns. Sheol will consume their bodies and they will no longer live in impressive houses. Sheol is an ancient Hebrew word for the grave or for death. It might be very comparable to the Greek concept of Hades, the, the place of the dead. But we see that at the end of things, the godly will be vindicated. So some of the injustice, this, there's this idea that the injustice and unjustness of this world can be overcome, can be compensated for, can be vind vindicated in the afterlife. And then we see in Isaiah 26 and 19, your dead will come back to life. Your corpses will rise up. Wake up and shout joyfully, you who live in the ground. For you will grow like plants drenched by the morning dew, and the earth will bring forth its dead spirits. That word corpses there talks about a very, very physical body resurrection, not just a spiritual resurrection, not just ghosts, but but and in contrast to the spirit idea at the, the end, there is this idea of that those who rise again will have a physical presence as well. And then Daniel 12, 2, many of those who sleep in the dusk ground will awake, some to everlasting life and others to shame and everlasting abhorrence. So there's this idea that the dead have two distinct paths. One, this life, which we looked at in our text of salvation, that salvation is best described as new life, as everlasting life, as abundant life. And others have a different um, future for them as well. So there's two paths to the future that are going on here. Now, so so from those verses, we can see that although the concept of the re resurrection and afterlife was not well developed in the Old Testament, it is present even in the most ancient books. Job expects to see God in his flesh even after that flesh had been destroyed. The Old Testament passage speaks of several key ideas. The most important the idea of an afterlife allows for injustices of this world to be compensated for in the next. And then the use of the word corpses in the Isaiah passage definitely speaks to a bodily and physical resurrection. And the Daniel passage distinguishes in the Old Testament that there are two definitive possibilities for individuals. Some will truly live and others will experience everlasting abhorrence. So now... Just before we get to that question, just to look at this, in the Old Testament, the afterlife was seen as some of it, it wasn't very well developed. Some of it had to do with your progeny. You know, you lived on in your ancestors. And then there was this idea that at the end of times, in the day of the Lord, it was this developing idea that the nation of Israel would be bodily raised from the dead and go and be vindicated for the sufferings that were allowed to happen to them by Yahweh. Real quick, and just this question, how often do you think about the end of things? Now, the newsboys have this old, you know, song from like a millennium ago, a song from several decades ago called Lost the Plot. And one of the ideas is first we misplaced the ending, then we lost the plot. The idea is that the ending of this story puts into context all the other pieces. So th how we think about how things end changes how we live here and now. 
So we'll develop this idea later. Next video, we'll look at what Jesus says about the end times, about what's coming. And then ultimately, we'll look at what the rest of the New Testament, outside of Jesus's words, says about the resurrection and the new life to come as well. So as always, there are three ways to join in person Sunday nights at 7 p.m. in the Jimic, um, and then live Monday nights, 7 p.m. via Zoom these weekly wrap-ups on YouTube and WordPress. I'm all over the social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress, YouTube. Those links are in the description below. Enjoyed having this conversation with you and hope to continue it again real soon.